Hey, Mark Nelson here, and we have a very special guest on today's show. Katie Smith is here with me doing an interview. It's an unstinking believable interview. It starts out very normal like most of it, and then she takes us to a place where I just unbelievably got blessed from it. So without further ado, here's this, today's show. How long have you, you been an entrepreneur? Um, so I officially started in entrepreneurship uh, last fall. I became a coach. And prior to that, I had been in, in media, uh, nonprofits, and education. So um, that was my background. It was a very different world. And um, I don't know if you're already recording or not, but um, yeah. yeah. So, I, so I'm like a year <laughs> into entrepreneurship, right? Not quite a year. And uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey. It's, um, for me, it's been a lot of mindset shifting. So going from, you know, this is my dream to, okay, how do I, how do I step that back, right? Like, so um, I have a huge vision. Everybody has a different thing. And what I love about entrepreneurship is I think there's really a place for everyone in this world when you find the need that you can provide, right? So um, I love that. I, so I've been able to take, um, you know, my experience in media, my experience uh, in the nonprofit world and uh, in education and just say, okay, what are the things that I'm really good at? And then what, it, what is needed kind of in the world right now? And how can I merge those two together? So um, uh, working in the nonprofit, I was doing a lot of mentoring for, um, uh, they, they're college students, but it was people from the ages of 17 to 64, basically how to navigate being in America when you're from somewhere else. Okay. And so um, that was my background for uh, seven years before um, moving into entrepreneurship as a coach and as an inspirational speaker. So I'm moving into that. That's where I want to go. I want to, um, I remember, and everybody's process is different, but I was at a, a four day in-person event called Abundance. And it just rocked my world. My husband had gone to it like six months before and it totally like he came home a different person. So I was like, I have to get into this. So whatever you just did at this event called abundance, which I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm weary of charismatic terms, but um, I was like, I've got to have whatever that was. And so um, one of the activities that they do at abundance um, is, you know, you, just like I told you, you list your, your skills and your passions, and hopefully I'm not giving too much away of that process. No. But, um, <laughs> but um, in doing that, I'm like, gosh, you know, I had this vision when I was 14 of being an inspirational speaker, pouring into people. I love to help people. I love them. I love to see what is good about them and, and just say, that's it. That's the thing. And so, but how do you take that and turn it into a business? And so um, right now I'm pursuing coaching, doing individual coaching. I've coached, coached over seven people in the last year. I had a summit uh, related to parenting and parenting tips, um, you know, with COVID happening and schools being shut down. I was like, what can I do? What can I do to really serve a specific hurting area that, uh, you know, group of people. And so thinking like an entrepreneur, you know, how can I find that need and fill it? Um, I, it's funny because we, we did homeschooling for many, many years. Every year we were like, are we doing this or are we not? So I'm not one of those people who's like, you can only homeschool. That's not how I think. Um, so just putting that out there, because I've noticed there's a, a, I didn't know, but there's a huge divide in the world right now between people who think homeschooling is great and people who are like, no. And there's a lot of comparison going on. And I, I really had no idea that that was a thing because when we were homeschooling, we were so involved with uh, the nonprofit work and working with international students that we weren't part of a co-op. We weren't part of like the homeschool world. There, it's a subculture, right? So we had our own so subculture in our home and um, we found a need. There were all these international students who really wanted American families to um, be their hosts. And that might be something that somebody looks into if they're like, you know, I'm not sure what my future niche in entrepreneurship is going to be. Well, every single university has international students, even right now in COVID. And those international students are lonely and they're looking for kind people to, to live with. And they'll actually pay you a small amount to live with you. And so that might be a way for some people, you know, if you're willing to learn hospitality, 
um, that might be a great way to earn some money for a while and and pour into people who really need it. And I love talk to, talking about it like you get to be a diplomat. You get to be that bridge between what somebody has experienced in the media about America and what actually it means to be an American. And so it's, it's anyway, I obviously I loved doing that and, uh, and I love what I do now. Um, well, you, you have know, a passion for it. That is I do. I, I, that's like one of my gifts is passion. So I'm like, ah, oh, you know, give me anything to talk about and I'll just have a great time. Um, because I, I do, I think everyone is on this planet with a gift and I believe every single person, you know, it's just a matter of time of figuring that out being okay with, um, you know, not doing it right is huge and yes. picking yourself up again and dusting yourself off. I mean, I do this on a daily basis, Mark. Um, just, you know, what did I do? Well, what, what am I missing? You know, where's the disconnect? Um, I read a book last year that was extremely helpful with identifying disconnects between my passions and what somebody else experiences and how I can serve them. And oh, cool. Yeah, oddly enough, it was written by um, an FBI top negotiator named Chris Voss. And uh, he, he talks about a lot of different things. One of the things he talks about is like getting on the same page with the person that you're talking to okay. and really finding out what it is they really want. And instead of, you know, if somebody says back to you, like thinking linguistically, if somebody mentions back to you, oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. They're probably not agreeing with you. But if you say something and they say, that's right, that's a nugget, you've connected with them and their passion. And so um, I, I'm trying to employ that, yeah. That, that's interesting. Oh, there we go, we're back. There you, you go. <laughs> you were frozen, I thought, well, it, and I don't have very good internet here. And it's funny because we living on a lake, I have uh, two RVs like 15 feet away from me. and the Wi-Fi connection is actually in the water. Oh, so I'm, wow. the only one, I'm the only one who has it. Oh, so wow. I want to use mine. So I thought, well, maybe one of my neighbors is on. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. That's why I record, though, because I go back and edit. and kind of. Go. Oh, great. You know, your, your thing about homeschooling is we thought about it when, when we first had it. My wife didn't feel like she was going to be the best person for it. Mm -hmm. And then I wasn't teaching that. And then I got into teaching and I, because I was in the business world, I, I have a little different view of it. It's a, uh, I think some teachers, they frown on the, the only challenge I see with homeschooling is some of these kids come in and they haven't been around a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. and, and I teach in an inner city school and oh my gosh, I, I mean, some of these kids have been, I don't want to say shelter. They've just been their family mm -hmm. and a lot of great families. And, um, well, now they come in with an inner city kid whose language is so different and whose lifestyle is so different and they're just thrown. And so as a teacher, I try to, I don't try to bridge the gap. I just try to help them through that to see each mm -hmm. other. It's like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of stories, but I believe in it. It's right now, it's like, you know, Knox County is we go back full time and there's three in my school district there's 325 kids opted for virtual learning but um, if if the school goes out where we're at I teach 90 minute classes so the student has to sit in front of that camera for 90 minutes for my class mm. I mean they have a hard time in school right uh, and I don't follow that because I like to goof around so we do different things <laughs> it's like yeah. a, I teach yeah. math how do you listen to a math teacher for 90 minutes it doesn't work it's like no yeah no yeah but the, I mean but that's one of the great things right like um if you take what you're doing in front of the camera or in front of the class and you say okay we all need to stand up and take a break now I know I do okay guys it's been 40 minutes everybody take five minutes we'll be back in five be here or you're gonna miss out you know and so um just setting that expectation ahead of time because you're exactly right that nobody can sit for 90 minutes I mean um we homeschooled at all different stages of development and um, I'm an ESFP and I get bored very easily. And so if what we're doing is not super fabulous, um, I have to find a different thing to do. I, I, right. I, I can't stick with it. And so um, even for those subjects where I'm like, that's, that's not my forte, you know, you can outsource stuff like that. But I love that you're a math teacher in person 
And um, right now my husband works for a company that actually serves special needs kids in your school district. So uh, yeah. he's, he's working with, um, gosh, I don't want to say too much, but he's, he's working on how to game of the curriculum that they do. So their curriculum is all about um, finding the student's gifts and turning it into an employable skill. Oh, neat. And how to do that and how to become workplace ready. Um, so it's, it's fascinating. I love the work that company is doing and I just really applaud everyone in public education. I know it's, it's a real service to a lot of people um, and uh, a lot of good people in education. There, there are. It's, uh, you know, it was interesting coming from Wisconsin. It's uh, our classes were 47 minutes and I taught honors math and it was perfect. I teach 20 minutes, they do their work, we talk and they'd be gone. Now this 90 minute thing, and I understand where it comes from, but it's like, oh my goodness. When I first got down here, they, they, um, I was teaching eighth grade and one of my mm -hmm. principals said, now all students, you need to be teaching them for 90 minutes. And then she came up and the research shows, eighth graders can only sit still for 15. I'm going, okay, you just contradicted yourself. Right. How do I get 38 grade kids up and then get them back down? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's uh, bizarre. But it, yeah. it worked. I mean, it, that's what teachers do. Right, right. Well, and, and that's my favorite thing. You know, if you've have you ever watched anything, any videos or listened to anything by Tony Robbins? I do. Okay. So uh, he, yeah. he does a lot of physical stuff. Mm -hmm. And I've learned in my entrepreneurship, I have to incorporate that just like you can't sit still and learn over and over again. I have to get up and do something. So like if I'm having a bad morning, I don't know if you know his trick where you pump your arms a bunch of times, yeah. but I'm telling you it works. It do works. You do that? And I did. He does. Yeah. Yeah. He does. He, uh -huh. he, um, he has a lot of free resources on YouTube now because his books are, some of his books are, you know, 20 years or older and it's free on YouTube. And so you can listen to those. He goes through a morning routine, which is outstanding. It's I just making... listened to that. Oh, did you really? Yes. Are you kidding me? No, that was the one that's like 15 minutes long. Yeah. I just, I just, <laughs> yeah. The whole thing, yeah. I don't remember all the steps, but that was pivotal for me. Mm -hmm. Having a resource like Tony's books was pivotal for me. And um, it was so cool. One of my, um, one of my best friends in San Diego. We were living in San Diego last fall. Um, and we had been there for, that's my hometown. We're in East Tennessee now, but, um, so as friends, her next door neighbor, uh, had worked for 27 years. And so when I realized, okay, my next step is going to be to go into coaching. I wonder if, I wonder what that, like, how could I work for Tony Robbins in his organization? Like what could them so that I could be around coaching because I that's not my background so um actually my friend introduced me to this wonderful woman who worked for Tony like I said 27 years and she gave me like an hour and a half you know informational where we just sat down and she just poured into me and told me about her life and told me about Tony's development and told me about you know go read every one of his three times you know and um and she was a hundred percent right so I can't wait to go back to her in September and say, look how much, I mean, I'm so honored to be interviewed by you, Mark, but, um, but this is the journey, right? It's one step at a time. So That's now right. I've been paid to coach over seven people and I've, I've spoken now, this is like my fourth or fifth time since May that I'm getting to speak, which is something I love. And then I got to, to start a podcast on faith and culture with, um, one of my former, um, we were kind of employees. There's a J, uh, there's a radio station in Chattanooga called J103. It's a Christian radio station, and uh, they do uh, contemporary Christian music. But they've started doing other types of ministries in media, and one of them is the podcast, The Intersection of Faith and Culture. I've been co-hosting that with my friends. Oh, since exciting! It is. So I've been doing it since February, and so like it's amazing. You know, when you put yourself out there and you say, "Look." I don't know how all this is going to shake down, but I know that I know that I know that, that if I don't do this, I'm going to die. You know, like, <laughs> you know, I kind of feel like I'm an artist, you know, if you watch PBS and you see artist stories, you know, and they like, they're a little melodramatic and stuff, but, but it's like, um, you know, there's something to that. There's something to don't give up. There's something to, you've got something burning in you and 
the world needs it. You know, there's something to that. And so it's just, you know, finding the right people. I'm so blessed. The people who put on that abundance event, um, I've been in that community now for almost a year and that has made all the difference because I have a lot of wonderful friends, but you know, maybe they're very comfortable in the career that they chose right out of college. Most of my friends are. And so I'm definitely an odd duck when it comes to that community. And so I've just had to kind of accept that, accept that I'm kind of an odd duck in that way. And, ex and then the odd thing was though, Mark, I found that there's a whole community of people like me who really? are like, well, if I don't, if I don't do this, I'm just, what am I here for? Why am I on this planet? Right. And so if, if somebody's really wrestling with that, I would, I would just say, yes, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. There's a promise in, in the Bible that says that in Jeremiah 29, 11. And um, it says, uh, do you mind if I quote a scripture real quick, Mark? I do not mind nothing. Okay, great. Thank you for that permission. Um, it says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will seek me and find me when you seek with all of your heart. I just cool. love that. Thank that, you. That's I take that. Yeah, amen, thank, right? Thank like, you. That's like a you're speaking to me. It's, it's interesting because when, when you talk about people switching careers, I was in business I, with my parents. Mm -hmm. My two brothers and I ran three hardware stores and loved it. And then the retail world changed. Right. And I, and I always had my teaching degree. And I, we're, we lived by Minneapolis St. Paul at that time. And I kept reading that they needed math teachers. And I was very, I was with my kids in sports. And I kept seeing, man, there's a, I'm a dad to about 10 kids here. Why am I not teaching? Mm. So I went into teaching. And when you talk about this, it's, um, mm. I felt I needed to do more because mm. I, I help maybe 80 to 120 kids a year. Wow. Uh, but there are a lot of people out there. Right. And I know I can touch people. So it's like, okay, how do I, how, how do I get this thing going? So I went into an entrepreneur at first with the idea of making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And I soon found out that didn't work. <laughs> so then I, excuse me, I tried to figure out how, you know, what can I do to help the most amount of people? And I, I know there was a time when, when we were sitting and um, I'm a cancer survivor and we've had health, not health challenges, but uh, financial challenges. And I'm going, you know, there's so many people just like me. That's who I'm going to talk to. Mm -hmm. I'm going to help them. I'm going to get them going somewhere somehow to find their way, either through a business or a, some kind of little side hustle. They can make a little money. So that's how I got started. That is, and right. I have so much more to do. <laughs> oh man. Well, I, you know, we're in a, a community together of entrepreneurs. Yes. It's been such an honor to get to know you there. And, uh, the way you show up is just so kind and so gracious. And, um, you know, the world needs more kind and more gracious men, you know, <laughs> like we need you. My husband is a kind, gracious man too. And, mm -hmm. and, um, you guys are special. You guys are really special. I feel like men really have gotten a bad rap for a long time. And I, I just want to edify you about that. So thank you. It comes from a mother, I believe. <laughs> oh, of course. <laughs> The mother factor. Well, I, there's one more thing I really, when I was thinking about speaking with you this morning, I was like, oh, there's one more thing I would just love for everyone to watch. And it's a family friendly um, docudrama ish uh, series on air called The Men Who Built America. And oh, I, I love that. Have you seen this series? No, I don't know. The Men Who Built America. I, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. You know, I think every single person, whether they're public schooling or private schooling, they need to find something entrepreneurial to do. And they should be thinking like that from a very young age, because we all need to reinvent ourselves. We all need to be okay with the fact that one income stream might not always be there. And so how can we be of service to the people around us or through the internet? Um, so I love that you're reading Russell Brunson. That's fantastic. Or that you've read him. That's great. Cause he's all about, you know, using the internet to generate and impact more people. 
So um, anyway, but the, the men who built America is fantastic. So it's about the men who started the railroads. Like if we, I don't know any community in North America where you can't in some area of that community hear a train late at night. Like, oh. right? Like, am I right? Like, it's so funny, you know, we're in San Diego, we hear a train at night. We're in, Lama you know, other parts of Southern California, here a train at night. I'm in Athens now, here a train at night. So that is uh, are, so true. Right? Yeah. So there, there are these entrepreneurs that saw that there was something to be done. And so in The Men Who Built America, it talks about that. And um, even in the even in Downton Abbey, they talk about the railroads. It's very interesting. I'm re-watching re that a little bit at night. And I'm just fascinated by history, changes in history, looking for those themes. How did people show up in, the, in that? And then how can I, um, that really inspires me. Like, it's easy to get overwhelmed. So if you've got to watch anything, watch something like, um, you know, historical fiction or drama, just to see how people navigated tough seasons that were just you know not predictable you mean don't watch the news oh god <laughs> i am you know it's, it's, it's that's a whole other topic right it's really interesting because the people i live by it they're tennesseans and they believe one way and it's uh i, I love them to death we've just agreed not to disagree oh, just becoming friends so so i've pretty much so so the people that live around me are Tennesseans too, but they're all very liberal. And mm -hmm. I, I think maybe you're implying that the Tennesseans around you are more conservative. They all are conservative. Oh gosh. So we need to switch pockets and just see how the other side lives because it's just, it's a different world for me. I thought we were moving to a conservative area and everyone around me is not, they're not, they're not the stereotypical conservatives. Very interesting. It, it is. There's a lady next to me. I love her to death. And we finally decided that we're, she, she started saying, Nelson, you only believe this. I said, no, I don't. I believe in finding the right people to help us through this mess. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who that is yet. Mm -hmm. And I looked at her and I said, and we are done talking about it. Hey! <laughs> I want to be friends with her. I mean, it's, we're not, our conversations aren't going to, we're, she's stubborn, I'm stubborn. So anyway. Right. Right, finding that you know what can what do we really want out of this relationship? Yes, is a great question. Right? Like, where are we really headed with this? What do we really want? Yes, we're not going to be able to meet all the needs that the other person has, but um, you know, you're a kind and gentle person. I'm sure she can see that. So. Oh, we get along really well. We we do it. We have fun. We'll banter, and then we both kind of look at each other and say, "Oh, that's too far." <laughs> Right. Well, now, uh, um, about entrepreneurship, though, you and I haven't spoken a whole lot about what you're crafting and launching right now. Is now a time that you'd want to talk about that and share that? Well, I, I certainly can. I'd much rather talk about what you're doing. I do. I, ha I put a course out and I do webinars. Um, um, my course, my main course is teaching people how to build an online business. Oh, yeah. The ground floor from... Uh, and I'm just putting something together about how they can find their right niche, just like we've been talking about, because it's there's so many of them out there. It's like, you know, where are you? What's your passion? You know, what do you really want to do? Where can you help people? And mm -hmm. um, so it, it, it's that's what I do. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't do I do coaching. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm trying to follow a, a, a pattern where. It, it's once school starts, it's hard for one-on-one -on -one coaching. So I'm going to try to do a, a mastermind group with someone. Oh, awesome. Okay. So when I hear you say how to build an online business from the ground up, it makes me think of like becoming an Amazon seller. Is that what that is? No, 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 no. Building your, I believe in info products. And I shouldn't say that because that as soon as I said that, it's like, if that's what people want to do, that's what they want to do. Is yeah. they want to sell Amazon. That's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna, I, I, um, you know, I started out like many people in an MLM and lost my shirt and almost lost my family. And uh, that's my thing, though. <laughs> well, I'll, you know, it's it's funny. I was talking to um, to another friend yesterday, and and we were just discussing where we're at and where we're going and stuff like that. And I said, you know. I think really what it comes down to it is if I'm going to interview people, I want to hear their inspirational stories. And everyone has one. Everyone has that. 
moment where we thought we were done. You know, we thought we hit bottom and then somehow we're still here. And so to remember that as powerful and to share it is there. so maybe, maybe uh, I'll get to interview you about that sometime, Mark. That would be great. I would like that. It's a, uh, so that's what I do. I, 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 and I think there's a need for it because people right now are looking. They really are. Oh, I mean, the lady I, I interviewed yesterday, she had no idea what to do. But she wanted to be interviewed as an entrepreneur, and I felt sorry for her. So the interview changed. It's like, okay, here's what you'd have to do today. I'm going to give yes. you an action step. Yeah. And then tomorrow, you send me a Facebook message telling me what you did, and then I'm going to give you another step. Mm -hmm. And we're going to slowly build. It's not going to happen overnight because right. it's... It's time. Yeah, she hasn't been on the internet. She hasn't been online. So there's so much she has to build, which we all do. Right. We have to build things. I can yeah. tell you better than media. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my fave. <laughs> I have quite a few faves. <laughs> you, you look, oh my you, gosh. You look exactly like my uh, one of my sister in laws. You're a very oh. beautiful person. Yeah. Her name's Barb. I'm surprised I didn't say Barb about four times today. Oh. Oh, that's great. Wonderful. Good, good. Yeah. So, it, you know, I, I don't know, um, you know, how much more time you have, but I would, I do just, just want to say to um, everyone who's listening, you know, this is not an accident that you're hearing this podcast. This is very important. You know, there, there have been three times in my life I nearly died and I didn't. And um, so I would just encourage you that if you're in a dark place or, you know, just struggling, just struggling, it's okay to struggle. And I just want to affirm that um, the same God who made the trees and made the wind and made the air, he made you and he, he sees you and he has not forgotten you. And it is okay to wrestle him to the ground. He is not afraid of your questions. He's not afraid of you asking or demanding or cussing at him. He can handle it. And, and that is the best place to go. And I find as an entrepreneur that over and over again, I have to go back to him as my source. And that he is my stability. He is my rock. He is my shelter. There's a verse that says that we are under the, that he covers us with his feathers. We're like literally like a little baby bird, you know, in a nest and he puts his feathers <laughs> over us. Like, oh, the language, right? I have, I have light chills as I think about it. Um, so just knowing that, like that is reality. And then what we think about becomes how we experience the world. So if we're always thinking that it's hopeless, um, that's what we're going to have. And I mean, that is so hard. That, but it's so funny because once I started learning about mindset stuff and really digging deep on it this year, I, I learned that, wow, the, the whole New Testament is full of lessons on mindset that yeah. You know, it says, um, do transform your thinking, you know, let your mind be renewed, you know? So for me, that looks like letting go of old patterns of thought that d don't serve me anymore. Maybe they served me back then, but they're not serving me now. So an example of that would be, I don't know how to do this. Well, I don't know how to do this. If you think of it in terms of like a, like imagine a stream and when you think, I don't know how to do this. The electrons and the energy that flow, literally flow through the neurons in your brain, stops. So it's like a dam being dropped into that stream. And now the water can't go anymore. Same thing happens with our thoughts. And this is baffling. So I, where I used to be like, mindset, whatever that means, you know, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going into, you know, my thoughts become who I am. You know, it's like, really? Come on. But... But if you look at it from a brain science perspective, it's 100% true. It's 100% right. true. In the same way that when we learn language, like when they do studies of the brain and language, that different things start firing in the brain. And, um, you know, one of the greatest commands in all of scripture is to sing. And, you know, I, I never really took that 100% seriously. Like, I love to sing. I used to write songs. I went to Belmont University when I was young because I wanted to be a music producer. Quickly found broadcasting, realized that was my main gift. So I was like, you know, I was not going to be, <laughs> I'm not going to be a music producer. But um, all that to say, though, this year I learned that singing, the act of singing, activates more places in the brain than any other activity. Seriously. Isn't that amazing? It is. 
it's like, what? And then, you know, we've all heard about listening to classical music and playing it for your plants and that they'll live better, but there's something to that. And so if, if you're ever stuck in a rut, you know, just put on Justin Timberlake's, you know, um, dance song and just be like, okay, I'm going to listen to this on repeat until something changes. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) like eventually it will will. And so I don't, I don't understand how all this works, but there's something about what we think and singing and what we focus on that affects how far we can go as an entrepreneur, as a family member, as a spouse. And it's, it's, we get to be a gift to others and how we choose to regulate ourselves is the gift that God gives to us that we get to choose how to do that and how to do that well. And we often need people to come alongside us. So Mark, I just applaud what you're doing and I just love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. You need to be a speaker. You really (laughs) Thank you. That's so affirming. (laughs) That's where I want to go. (laughs) This was, uh, you're going to reach a lot of people. So with that, it's how can people get in touch with you? Oh, thank you. Yeah. So um, I'm not sure how much of my name you can see on the screen. I put my name, you know, it's Katie Smith, but I should probably change it to just say Katie speaking because there's like 27,000 Katie Smiths. So you'll never find me on Facebook if you use Katie Smith. But um, many years ago, before we uh, were working with international students, I'm writing down because I have to write and think at the same time and talk at the same time. I'm a slow learner. I have to do it all at once. Um, so um so there, I had a, a, a blog and a podcast and um, a radio show, and it was called Katie Speaking. And I thought, well, I don't know, that sounds arrogant to me. But anyway, it stuck. I have a Facebook page called Katie Speaking, and it is very easy to find. And I would love to connect with anyone through there. Um, it's, it's becoming a great community of people. I've had over 100 people join in the past week. I'm so grateful for that. It's just, you know, when you start you know, finding your niche and finding, you know, believing in your gifts, you know, believing it's not a mistake that you are who you are. And that's part of my story too. Um, All of a sudden things start happening. So Mark, this interview is one of those special and affirming moments. And um, I would love to connect with, with you and your friends through Katie speaking on Facebook. Thank you very much. This has been a great interview. You have blessed me today. Man, wasn't that show just awesome? Katie Smith is a rock star, and you can tell she's been in media. You can tell she is going to go somewhere and help a ton of people. So what she said to go find her on Facebook under her page called Katie Speaking, because she will not only help you, but she will bless you. So you all take care. Thank you. Please go give a review for this podcast. Let me know if I can help you in any way. You all take care.